have a nice topographic map of the area that was exaggerated to show that Long Island is not flat and where we actually get our uh, water from. So there's the upper aquifers which connect to the ponds and then the lower aquifer is where we get our drinking water from. There's a lot to explore on the South Fork and you need a lot of tools to be able to properly find everything. So this is our example of the naturalist closet and different tools you could use to help discover nature on the South Fork or anywhere. And our life of a dying tree. The dying tree. The dead tree. Things to find. And the rotting log, the salamanders. And other things to find. Also have many other habitats like our ocean fish. Also by the ocean. We have our swale habitat, our red fox, the northern harrier, competing for some of the same food. And there's two kinds of fox on Long Island, and a great place to go looking for tracks and other animal signs. In a forest, there are temporary ponds, and our wood frog. And be a springtime pond in the summertime. We have scarlet tanagers visiting. And they're a migratory bird. Spending their summers in North America and their winters down in South America. In the fall, the woodland ponds may even dry up and we have some wood ducks searching for nuts and acorns. This was a temporary pond but there are also permanent ponds. Our bullfrogs, bullfrog in the puddle there. And muskrats will spend all year round. And our statue snapping turtle. That's it for our basic fresh water. We also have salt water, our salt marsh, and our diamondback terrapin. And we have some black crowned night heron and a mink would also be found in our salt marshes. Salt marshes are a transition between land and the ocean. And out for the extreme ocean, you have Montauk Winter Residence. This is our harbor seal, one of the winter residents. We are south for them. And there's many, many other animals that will come here in the winter time. And a few little special exhibits our walking sticks, we have lots of plant leaves, and our box turtles, which of course they're both buried right there. <laughs>
local educators, as long as you keep them in the water, which is their native habitat, their natural habitat. Or a sea snail, a whelk is a sea snail, or you can pull the sea stalk. Don't be on the top of its body for protection with hundreds of tube feet for walking and pulling open shellfish for food on the bottom side. We have more um, amphibians and reptiles along this wall. These are the spotted salamanders. Common forest animal. They live in a burrow underground. We also have milk snakes. And it is time to put our spotted turtle back in the tank. He's been having some fish in the tank. He gets fed in a separate tank and he goes back. These are the common painted turtles back here on Long Island. The museum property borders the Long Pond Greenbelt, which is a nature preserve. Just on the other side of this small pond is a covered deck area here for classes or outdoor activities. And then if we continue on the path around to the side, we will come to the grass area where we have the vent space. So this area is available for a tent or outdoor activities. It's just a short walk down the trail to the pond. Osprey nest platform. There is a nesting osprey pair in there. They have produced an egg. We're waiting for the egg to hatch right now. This is a natural pond with painted turtles, bullfrogs, aquatic insects. We do a lot of uh, pond programs here. This is the native butterfly garden where the host plants provide nectar for many, many insects, including the monarch butterflies that are migrating. We call this the teaching pond because it has all of the local pond animals, bullfrogs, painted turtles, and the aquatic insects. And we can capture even a bullfrog right there in the very center. So out beyond the purple martin nesting boxes is the Long Pond Greenbelt Preserve, which extends all the way up to Sag Harbor Village. But the museum's property ends right here.